It's my understanding, and this uh, other scientists have well have been looking at this, pointing out the the uh, connection between our, our weather and the solar activity. Yeah, th this has to do with what's known as a modern minimum, where the sun goes into hibernation, as they describe it, where the number of solar flares diminishes to zero and the sun lays quiet. And uh, clearly, the sun is the source of all energy on Earth. Nothing happens here without the sun. Without the sun, it's all over. And so <laughs> how, how bright the sun shines is a key element. And you and I were taught in school of the solar constant, a figure that represented the energy arriving at Earth from the sun, as though it were a consistent light bulb burning. Well, it's not that at all, of course. It's a great ball of hydrogen exploding and uh, atomic fusion. And uh, it is, uh, this great mass of fire has a lifetime to it. And it uh, has ups and downs. It is not uniform and it burns irregularly and it throws off huge amounts of, of uh, radioactive materials at times and it, at other times it lays quieter. And which side of the sun is facing toward Earth at the time of these events has a lot to do with the energy received at Earth. And so all of this is the controlling factor of the climate on Earth. And if you plot the temperatures of Earth the uh, ice ages and the warm spells, the medieval warm period and so on, and you plot those all out to, as best we can reproduce them, but we, you know, we didn't have thermometers for so long now, we only had thermometers for a couple hundred years and they're not very accurate. And where you put the thermometer is pretty important too. But let's say you do the best you can from tree rings or whatever other samples you get from ice cores or whatever, and you try to get the long-term temperatures of Earth, and then you compare that to your best record of solar cycles, they seem to lie together. So as goes the sun, so goes the earth. I think that's pretty clear. It's, the, it's daddy. And there are many scientists who uh, view the, the very minor increase in temperature we have had experienced in more recent times, not with alarm, but uh, suggest that that is a benefit. Well, time. there is a, <laughs> if you live in Canada or Minnesota, uh, you might feel that a little global warming would be a wonderful thing. And uh, I, I think you have a strong point. What is the right temperature for planet Earth? What is our ideal climate regime? Is it what we have had for the last 50 years? Or is it uh, something warmer or colder than that? I would tend to think a few degrees warmer might be a very good thing. And you indicate that indeed we have had a warming. Uh, I guess the preponderance of evidence might lead to uh, best suggest that we might have had a degree 0.2 of warming uh, over the last uh, 30 years or 40 years. Uh, but that's, boy, that's vague and it's hard to pin down. Because during this period of time, these great cities have built up. And uh, urban heat islands are very real. So if you have a thermometer in the city, its temperature has definitely climbed. But the thermometers in the countryside around that city haven't increased and significantly, if at all. And so uh, you, it depends which thermometers you're reading. And you also, we've even discovered that they used to whitewash the little shelters, the little white boxes with the louvers on the side that had the weather thermometers in them. And uh, then they started painting them with latex paint. <laughs> it's about a degree difference between whitewash and latex. Thank you. I mean, this, is, this isn't easy stuff now. So there's a lot of variables. Here. Absolutely. Uh, even if uh, we, we have, uh, say, we, we have granted a, a one degree increase, and even that is not certain or somewhere in that neighborhood, um, how does that compare with other periods in history? That, uh, we, we've had larger increases, have we not? Oh, of course. Uh, around 1900, the Northwest Passage was clear of ice. Uh, we had a warm spell. We had the, uh, the little ice age, you know, that preceded that by about 300 years. Remember that uh, Greenland was settled uh, by uh, the Nordsmen when uh, the coast of Greenland were uh, fertile and clear and, and beautiful farming country and they established farms that operated there for more than 100 years. Those same coasts that are now covered in ice and where the ice is reportedly melting now and the alarmists are screaming about it as though it's some catastrophe. 
there's these ups and downs. In previous uh, warming periods, we don't have any great evidence uh, of uh, species uh, extinction? Or, or what? Well, take the polar bear, for instance. There's so much talk about the polar bear today. Excuse me? Polar bear made it through all of that. The polar bears have existed through all this time, despite the fact the Eskimos were hunting them for food and clothing. With all the, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the Eskimo nation. Uh, they, they need the, the meat, they need the uh, fur, uh, they need the hides. Uh, polar bears are part of their existence, they're part of the, they're the food cycle. But and despite the changes in climate, despite the Eskimos, the polar bears have lasted through all of this time. And now there's this incredible alarm about the polar bears because Al Gore stood in front of a picture of a polar bear on a piece of ice floating in the ocean and decried the death of the polar bear. Well, the polar bear that picture was phony to start with. It was taken by a scientist on a research vessel that was up examining ice, and the polar bears were over on the mainland. They were very curious about that boat and those people. They'd never seen anything like that in their lives, so they jumped on this ice floe and floated out to see it. Maybe they thought they were going to eat the scientist off the boat. I don't know. But then when they were through having their look-see, they jumped in the water and swam back to the shore. Now, no polar bears died in that, and I think it is horrible fraud take that picture, which was taken from that scientist without permission, and to turn that into an emotional plea to people who love polar bears. That is so unfair. And those polar bears are, the people who really keep track say there are more polar bears living on Earth today than there have been in recent years, about 25,000. What about uh, the, the concerns that many people have about uh, increased uh, tsunamis and hurricanes as a result of... Well, it's ridiculous. Excuse me? Uh, how about the uh, hurricane of uh, 1900 that uh, wiped out Galveston? The man didn't cause that. How about the historic hurricanes that have hit the Florida Keys? Uh, 1969, I was in Hurricane Camille, the most powerful hurricane ever to hit the United States. Uh, was that part of global warming and back in 69? We were still, we hadn't even talked about the coming ice age yet then. Uh, and to, to blame Katrina on global warming is another one of these emotional fraudulent frauds. I just, it, it offends me. Uh, Katrina was a, when it made landfall, it was a category three hurricane. And it happened to produce a very heavy rainfall over a city built below sea level, protected by inferior dikes because while science makes the world great, government screws it up. And the government hadn't built decent dikes and taken care of its business. You know, our whole society, uh, government takes so much credit, gets so much in the spotlight. News is all, seems to be all about government. And for them to decry Katrina caused what happened in New Orleans to happen was ridiculous. It's because the politicians hadn't built the dikes properly the pumps and the dike system. Does it concern